It's another episode of Love Beyond Words and we are happy that you're here. Welcome back everyone. If you're tuning in for the first time, Love Beyond Words is a series for married couples to help make their marriages better in Christ. We have a whole playlist of the previous sessions that you can access in the description below. So before we go any further, let's invoke the Lord in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So, you know, when I was little, um, I had this piggy bank, which was more like a box where I would save all the coins that I would get. And once I had a considerable amount, I would go and, you know, buy a candy or a pack of chips or something like that. But why are you telling me this? That's because today's session is about managing your piggy bank. Uh, though obviously it's a bigger amount nowadays. And a bigger bank too. Exactly. So this session on managing your finances in a Christian way will be given by Gerard and Audrey. They have been married for 17 years and are blessed with three beautiful children, Isabel, Jaden and Asher. You might remember them from our very first episode where they shared their lives. And I'm really looking forward to this one. So over to you guys, Gerard and Audrey. Thank you, Byron and Andrea. Hello everyone. Jesus said in Matthew 7 about a wise man who had built his house on the rock and a foolish man who had built his house on the sand. We all know what happened. The rain came, the wind blew, and the house that was on the rock did not fall, whereas the house that was on the sand fell. Building your marriage on the rock surely means having God at the center on the rock. So what does building on the sand mean? Surely it must be quite the opposite, right? And Gerard, Jesus also said, we cannot serve both God and mammon. So can we connect building your life around money to building your house on the sand? Absolutely. St. Paul clearly writes to us that the love of money is the root cause of all evil. We need to learn how to manage God's given money. We need to learn how not to set our hearts on it. Today, we would like to share with you four tips on how to manage your piggy bank. Talking about piggy banks, remember when we were little children, we were so excited. Even when we got one coin to save it and to drop it into a piggy bank. Those were the days of fun and excitement. But somewhere along the way, we have really forgotten our basics and managing finances no longer is fun and excitement. A survey showed that the top reason of divorce is not infidelity, but arguments about money. Uh, Gerard, what is our uh, monthly income? Well, I think I'll have to check my bank statement to confirm it. And Audrey, that red dress you wore the other day, how much did you pay for it? Well, I don't remember. The bill is lying somewhere in the house. When I find it, I'll tell you, okay? <laughs> Does this sound familiar? Well, this is our first tip. Transparency. Financial transparency is something that is very important. It is one of the cornerstones for a honest relationship. I need to be able to trust my wife and my wife needs to be able to trust me. When I don't share something with her, I'm telling her that I don't trust you. Now, when I hide things, 
I'm basically developing cracks in my marriage and these cracks will one day shatter us. With all the reasons not to hide your financials uh, from your spouse, many of us still do it. What about trying to surprise your spouse or, uh, you know, trying to uh, save up some extra money? Well, that's not what I'm talking about here. Accepting that, the general rule is when it comes to finances, do not hide anything from your spouse. We need to look at money as not yours or mine. We need to learn to look at money as ours. We need to manage it together. This is God has entrusted this uh, to us together. I have learned lessons from my own mistakes. Years ago, I made some investments in the stock market without consulting Audrey. It was not meant to be a surprise. Uh, well, yes, of course, I wanted to surprise her when the money just doubles. Invariably, I was surprised when the money disappeared. And, <laughs> and now I'm in a situation where I don't want to share it with her because she's going to get hurt. For me, it felt like he didn't even consider the need to involve me in such a major decision. But he wanted me to share in the consequences of it. And I really felt hurt. Many of you out there might have gone through similar situations. Being able to trust your spouse all over again is really challenging and building that trust could be a lengthy and a very difficult process. And but how did we overcome it? Well, I used three steps. The first, I gave Gerard a second chance. Secondly, I did not hold his past failures for any of our future decisions. And thirdly, above all, more importantly, I entrusted and just surrendered this entire area to God. From then on, we started working together with our finances. So now, whenever there are certain decisions to be made, we discuss and we come together in consensus about it. And the consequences, we share it together. Yeah. We still made some errors. But the fact that we were sharing the consequences together and we never let each other down brought us much closer. So managing your piggy bank uh, is a great opportunity for you to take your marriage to the next level. Shall we move to the next point? Yes, now moving to our second tip. To be faithful in your tithing. So what is this tithing we are talking about? Tithing is a discipline to set aside all your income, uh, sorry, 10% of your income for, the, for God's kingdom. Now I would like to invite Elvis and Maclean. They are married for a long time. They would be sharing with us their testimony about tithing. Good evening, Gerard and Audrey. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to speak about our tithes and how we manage it. I am Elvis Kutino and this is my wife, McLean. We have been married for the last 27 years. We've had two kids. Our daughter is married and our son is 21 years old. It was about 27 years back that we really started tithing properly, I would say. Until such time, the workplace where I work in experienced difficult times and our salaries started coming in installments. And that is the time we said, why not hold back the tides? Little did we realize that this never helped. In fact, our expenses mounted and in the form of sicknesses, in the form of untimely vehicle repairs. All this happened and uh, the things never settled down. So we had to sit back again. I told Maclean, there is something wrong. So we sat back and we realized that we may be doing something what we are not supposed to do with respect to tithes. 
and we decided once again nothing doing whether it's installments or full salary we will keep aside tithes and give it in time that is when we decided whether it's the first installment i will set aside a set amount and give it as tithes as far as the expenses are concerned i think uh, my home affairs minister my clean will speak about it better even as we decided to uh, give our tithes every month to be faithful there were you know temptations come our way like when there were festivals and things birthdays came and when the school reopening the admissions came and i would tell elvis we'll skip this month and let's let's pay the next month but then he put his foot down and said nothing doing you just do what we have decided and then uh, we are thinking what to do how to go about then we thought of an, an idea you know every month we would keep an envelope which we every month put our money there and give it to the required place and uh, what we experienced after being faithful is awesome that we always had extra money with us at the end of the month and we started thinking and we could do many many more things like you know the next month when it came so that was the fruit of our faithfulness and even now in this covid situation our salaries have been coming in installments but once we did twice shy we said come what may we will set aside our tithes and give it without any cuts and without any delay we realized as said in malachi 3:10 god says test me we have been testing god for the last 27 years and we have re- realized that how much god is faithful whenever we require anything he kept up to his promise it's only that we need to put our full trust and faith in him and god responds thanks gerard and autry over to you thank you elvis and maclean your testimony was truly edifying and inspiring thank you tithing is one area that is highly debated many people are not convinced to give you google it and you will see a lot of mixed mixed ideas uh, that this is not a christian concept it's an old testament concept uh, the new testament doesn't talk about it the church doesn't insist on it and so on in fact i myself was not convinced about giving 1/10 i used to always debate on this topic saying that the new testament talks about god loves a cheerful giver and that this 1/10 is an old testament mosaic law concept that we are not obliged to follow but one day when i was spending time in prayer i was convicted when reading the scriptures from genesis 28 the context is jacob is running away from his brother esau he stops at this place called haran for the night and there he has a dream of a ladder going to heaven and the angels of god are ascending and descending uh, on that ladder and the lord is standing on the top and god gives jacob a promise saying that he will bless him uh, and his descendants like the dust of the earth and uh, that he would be their god he would protect them uh, he would bring him safely to this place that he would uh, take care of every need and so on and in response to that blessing jacob makes a vow he says he lists all that god uh, has promised and he says if you be my god you do all these things then of all that you give me i will return 1/10 back to you now what really touched me here was jacob did not say of all that i earn i will give you 1/10 he says of all that you give me i will return 1/10 back to you this was an attitude of thankfulness and gratitude inspired by this we decided to abide by this discipline 
of setting aside one tenth for the kingdom. And it has been twelve years since we started tithing from all the income that we have been receiving, and God has really blessed us in this area, and uh, we've seen His providence. in every area of our life when we started tithing just as how elvis and mcclean shared we too had difficulties in fact certain months we thought that we may not be able to meet all our expenses should we tithe but despite that we've been faithful in this area and we've always seen god faithful and we've never seen him let us down sometimes we may think uh you know as long as i give uh, 10% to god the 90% is mine and i can do whatever i want with it but that's a false idea the fact is that 100% of all that we have is what god gave us god has entrusted it to us it belongs to him we giving 10% is only a sign that the remaining 90% also belongs to him many also ask about uh, should i tithe on the gross or should i tithe on the net uh, or should i tithe on my meal coupons and so on we don't have clear answers always but i tell them this if you want to give you will always find a reason to give if you do not want to give you will always find a reason not to give another aspect i want to highlight here is the importance of teaching our children the discipline of tithing we have taught our children to tithe so from the gift money that they get they give a small portion or a 10% of their gift money and they take it to church to tithe so we have covered two tips the two t's which are transparency and tithing now we would like to talk to you about two more tips the two s's and they are spending and, and saving it. coming to spending i want to touch on two issues here one is impulsive buying and the other is buying something that you cannot afford the world makes everything look uh wanting and affordable like the amazing amazon sale right if i don't buy it today this offer will never come again and what's worse buy for 50000 and get an additional 10% off <laughs> and you don't even know what you want but you just want to create a need and fill your cart right and with the additional uh, 0% emi offer yeah it can really lower you we need to learn how to avoid these pitfalls do not fall for impulsive buying it is always good uh, to sit as a couple uh, discuss wait and reevaluate and when in doubt postpone the purchase and avoid borrowing at all costs it may be inevitable sometimes like uh, an emergency hospital expense but that is not what i'm talking about here uh, what i'm talking about is uh, borrowing to purchase something when you borrow you're in debt and debt is always stressful no matter how low the interest rate is today sometimes we are lured by this uh, Zero percent rates, and one thing I want to highlight here: the Bible is very clear. Proverbs twenty-two seven puts it very clearly that when you borrow money, you become a slave to the lender. The need to make payments can add to your financial stress in uncertain times like what we are in now. we've been through this difficult phase and god has really delivered us in this area you know it is so sad to realize that more than half of your income goes only into repaying of loans and uh, sometimes 
what makes us really fall in this area is that you know we look at it and we say oh it's such a small emi we can manage but as the saying goes a small leak can sink a great ship so we got to be very careful in making these kind of these kind of decisions many couples don't even discuss while taking a loan and when the burden becomes far too great to bear they are they don't even want to share with their spouse this is what we were talking about in the area of transparency yeah and the stress is all the more greater uh when the quantum of money involved is large like i've seen couples coming and telling me if you don't buy a house today uh we won't be able to afford it tomorrow this is a lie that many of us fall for and i asked them this question do you think god cannot afford this for you tomorrow and if you uh have already made this mistake you now precisely understand what i'm talking about but this is not the end of the world for us yes now god is our hope we need to surrender this area to him ask him for the grace to get out of it and work on a strategy to get out of debt i would like to invite uh, greg and swapna now uh, to share with us how they've been working in this area over to you greg thank you jerrod and audrey hi everyone i am greg and this is my wife swapna good evening everybody we been married for about 12 years and we are blessed with two children financial transparency is something that we both have realized during the initial years of our marriage itself when when it comes to making any decision with respect to finance we will not take it unless until we both have discussed and come to an agreement yeah. we both are working in id field and we wanted to secure our future by investing in real estate naturally being id employees loans are very easy to get so much so that banks would fund 90% of the property value so we thought if we could manage the initial down payment and the monthly emi so we could go ahead and purchase property so we decided to uh, and purchased two properties and and took two home loans right we initially thought we would sell one of our flats and clear a major chunk of our loan which would get rid of our loan burdens and we could be free but that never happened with that being the case major part of our earnings were still going into paying emis with that our finances were getting tight by day and any unexpected expense would create lot of stress we didn't know how to manage it we even had to go for go small joys like family outing and family vacation was not even a thought to make with all this stress around we came to know about financial stewardship that is when we realized that every blessing comes from the lord even our finances are something that we are blessed and the lord is giving us our finances we could acknowledge it by tithing but with this understanding and tithing coming into picture it was all the more difficult for us with all the stress that we are already going through we still took courage and prayed about it and we wanted to give the control to the lord and we started tithing yeah so ever since we took the decision to tithe no matter how difficult it would be we uh, been doing that religiously and we surrendered our area of finances in our lives to god and we prayed to god to uh, make us debt free and give us the wisdom how to go about it we could mobilize some of our investments we made in the market and could clear some part of our loans at the same time both of us were given raises in the in our workplaces and i was awarded some shares which we could sell and we could clear a major part of our loan not just that we could even use some small contributions uh, that we could uh, and routed towards our home loan repayment and those small contributions have helped us a lot so much that we could clear more than 50% of our home loans Uh, in about three years, yeah. and we are well on our path to clear our home loan in the next two years. Right. More than that, what we have realized is our security is not in our investments that we make, but by trusting in Lord. Yes. Over to you, Jarar and Audrey. Thank you, Greg and Swapna. We really thank God 
for the way he's leading and guiding you in your journey of becoming debt free that brings us to our last point saving do not let uncertain times or emergencies disturb your marriage it is important to have an adequate emergency fund yeah we are not talking about investments here uh this is something you can do over and above your emergency fund there are tons of advice you will find here evaluate and invest wisely what we are talking here is money that can be easily liquidated in case of an emergency this is a great way to uh, for your day to day liquidity requirements especially in the absence of a regular income or while tackling some difficult financial situations like emergencies yeah it is important uh, to ensure that you have an emergency fund of at least 6 months of your expenses you can increase it depending on your needs uh, and you can always park this in either uh, a savings bank account a fixed deposit or a liquid mutual fund but remember uh this should be uh, it should be possible to liquidate it easily so that you can take it out when there is an emergency we went through an emergency in 2014 i was diagnosed with cancer and i had to immediately go in for treatment so we needed money overnight it was an emergency that the emergency fund rather that really helped us take off from there of course the expenses were you know were were far beyond but god was so faithful and he provided us for it and so much so that we didn't need to borrow at all more than that i received miraculous healing yeah and uh, so start building your emergency fund before it is too late you can do it by utilizing uh, your declining expenses during this time especially during this lockdown uh, and as audi was saying a small leak can ship uh, sorry sink a mighty ship so beware of those little expenses start cost cutting measures uh, and uh, going forward and work on building this fund but one word of caution here we can be saving for the wrong reasons like fear or greed yeah and uh, one timothy 617 tells us that we should not put a trust in money that is uncertain we should put a trust only in god it is god who provides us even that money uh as audi was sharing our savings fell short of that big expense but it was god who provided us far beyond uh what we had in mysterious ways god moved uh, the hearts of many to give us uh, generously and again we should not put uh, sorry save uh because of greed because if that's the case we have just lost the point saving is doing our part and when required god will do his part so let's do a quick summary we shared with you uh four areas to focus transparency and tithing spending and saving these will not just help you uh, to be financially stable but it will also help you as a couple to live a healthy family life so thank you all for listening to us and uh, once again uh, thanks uh, byron and andy for having us over to you so that's transparency tithing spending and saving okay no four tips all right uh thank you so much jared and audrey for that insightful session on managing our finances and thank you elvis and mclean greg and swapna for sharing your lives with us what i really loved about the session was you know the reminder of 
how all our resources are from God and how we need to be good stewards and be generous. Yeah, I think for me, what also um, stood out was the fact that you need to be transparent um, and to see that the money that we have is ours rather than this is my share and, and, and so on. And then, you know, make decisions on spending in the same way. We hope you enjoyed the session as much as we did. Don't forget to like this video, share it with others and subscribe to our channels for more content. And if you are a person who loves lovely evenings and peaceful nights, then our next session, Beautiful Sunsets, is just for you. Beautiful Sunsets. Sounds very romantic, doesn't it? We'll find out next week. Until then, stay, stay safe, safe, good, good night, night and, and God, God bless. bless. By then, we have saved some extra money, right? So can I buy some baking stuff? I'll bake some yum cakes. Sounds great. But wait, that'll increase the number of dishes I need to wash, right? Mm, yeah, maybe. Hmm. <laughs>